Well, the way it started out is I was in Afghanistan 2013, 2014. Thank you for your service, and, man. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. And while I was over there, uh, me and my training partner, uh, I got pretty heavy into it. He was like an old school bodybuilder type. Yeah. Um, and just kind of took me under his wing while he was there and kind of fell in love with, uh, with lifting while I was over there and decided uh, when we weren't on a mission, I got one of the correspondence courses to get my personal training certification. Okay. And while, when I got back, I got a job and I was running a snap fitness here in Baton Rouge. And, you know, I'm sure you know all about those. It's not exactly conducive to what we're doing over here. Not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I got to, uh, got into CrossFit shortly after getting back. Nice. Realized I really hated burpees. Dude, and I hear that. Yeah. Got yeah. into uh, strength sports. It went from CrossFit to powerlifting to because of YouTube's algorithms and what they showed me next, found Strongman. There wasn't a place to train strongman around here, so I started slowly collecting implements. Uh, bought a yoke, got some couple small stones, some sandbags, and started like tucking those away in the closets at the snap I was running and doing training out of. And then my National Guard unit offered me a full time position oh, that was awesome, paying dude. three times more than what Snap was paying me. <laughs> Naturally, so that's I, a better option. Yes, I yeah. definitely jumped on that, and awesome. I realized I needed a place to keep all this stuff that I'd accumulated. Plus, I had like uh, like power racks that were still brand new in the box, just sitting behind my couch in my apartment. Um, and I, I just accumulated all this stuff, and I found this uh, this space that is actually less than a quarter mile from where we are right now awesome. that I could afford, even if nobody showed up. And then people started showing up. That space was a thousand square feet. Eight months later, we moved into a space that was 2,000 square feet, and now we're where we are now. It's uh, 7,600 square feet. We've got a lot of space. We're buying new equipment all the time, and yeah, the, the community here has just exploded since we opened our doors in, uh, in 2018. Do you think most people are wanting to get more into the powerlifting kind of sports and the strongman kind of things? Like That's becoming far more popular now more than ever. Uh, well, we've got a little bit of everything over here. We got some, it's mostly strong, man, but we've got powerlifting, we've got some Olympic weightlifters. Yeah. We've got some, uh, we got some Highland Games athletes and we got some gen pop oh, people. Cool, man. Awesome, uh, dude. But yeah. it definitely seems to mostly, uh, sorry, if you hear my dog going nuts in the dude, background. Don't, no worries. I don't care. It's all uh, good. Um, where, where was I? Sorry, right, you were talking about if, if you want to take care of your dog, you can. It's no problem, dude. Oh, I, no. He, he, <laughs> I could come he's back. put and, up in another room. He just has <laughs> full on crackhead energy all the time. <laughs> dude, he sounds uh, like an ankle biter. It's like, it's funny. You just know what kind of dog that is, like by the bar. Yeah, he, he's like this little 30 pound mutt that I got about Probably. five years ago. Yeah. And uh, he's, I think he's mostly Australian Shepherd. Oh, those so, are cute. Dude, those are, those are the cutest dogs, man. I've seen he, some Australian Shepherds like freaking. It's gorgeous animals, dude. <laughs> he, he, he basically looks like a jet black Aussie, but with like pug eyeballs. Dude, that's crazy. It, oh my it, gosh. It's weird. They're like, he's shaped like an Aussie. He has a face like an Aussie, but it yeah. constantly looks like his eyes are about to pop out of his head. <laughs> so you're like, you're like, don't look at his eyes. Everything else is fine. Just don't look at his eyes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he, he's a good dog. He's just full on crackhead. That's, um, that's awesome, man. No, yeah, I was saying, it, it, uh, I was, yeah, no, I was just asking about, um, you know, like how people are, you know, tending when it comes to body, I mean, sorry, uh, powerlifting and strongman type stuff. Cause you're, you know, you're one of the gyms that's cropping up along with a few others, you know, mm -hmm. like there's Valhalla. There's a couple there that are, that are kind of going down the same road. You know, they have like all this awesome equipment. They had like the Conan wheel, they have the stones, like shit, man, it's really cool. You know, I'm seeing this and it's awesome. I, I feel like what it is, is CrossFit kind of hit its bubble in yeah. uh, 2016, 2017. And a lot of those boxes started closing down. And the ones that didn't close down, a lot of them went to more boutique style training where yeah. they got nicer buildings. They've got, uh, you know, climate control and they got away from the whole box idea. But there's still a lot of people who really like that, uh, that kind of bare bones feel, but don't want to pay the 150 to $200 a month that, CrossFit was doing and like me, they really hated burpees. So they kind of gravitated more towards the powerlifting, the strongman, and just the more pure strength sports. 
Yeah. And that's why I think that, um, that a lot of these places are starting to grow. I know Valhalla cropped up probably about a year or two before we did. And, yeah. uh, yeah, we based, we based a lot of what I wanted to kind of create on, uh, what Sean created over there, mm -hmm. uh, along with like body docs, Fletcher's here in Baton Rouge. Like, uh, my original plan before we opened Atlas was I was going to buy Fletcher's from Paul. Okay. Uh, yeah, he had approached me about that, but there just wasn't enough space to do the strong man that we wanted to do. And then I got the opportunity that I did with the military and, and yeah, there, I think there's definitely room to grow for all these different gyms in the sure. area, um, which I don't know if you've, uh, if you kind of looked into the, uh, the metrics or everything, but only about 15% of, uh, of Louisiana residents actually have a, have a gym membership. I, I, I mean, unfortunately that makes sense. <laughs> and you know, I, yeah, I hate to admit it, but yeah, it's like in the, you know, in the classification of things, Louisiana is not, not high on the, the old fitness scale, but, uh, well, no, I get what you're saying, though. But yeah, like I definitely yeah. think there's room for all of us to grow. And uh, true, but yeah, maybe and, and we've seen it. We've definitely seen it over here. Yeah, and 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 maybe that's what you guys are doing is is what is more appealing to people in Louisiana. You know, mm -hmm. maybe maybe the the time of CrossFit and of like club gyms that's sort of passing because I'm seeing so many more people talk about you guys or Valhalla on social media, there's a lot more buzz surrounding your culture, you know, as opposed to clubs like Pac or Franco's, that kind of thing, you know? So, I don't necessarily know if it's because we're more appealing, but we're definitely more. Um, I think you guys are. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you think we are, yeah. but, uh, but the numbers don't lie. You know, the, the snap fitness that I ran had 560 members Okay. And right now we have less than a hundred over here. Okay. And I, I don't think it's necessarily because we're more appealing, but we're definitely, uh, we're definitely more unique. We're easier to share. And sure. a lot of these other places, uh, most of their members are made up because their doctor told them they needed to walk. So they went in somewhere where they had a treadmill and because people are joining places where they just want a treadmill, everybody's treadmills are exactly the same. It's true. <laughs> so point. Play, yeah. places like us, places like Valhalla, like Code 3, Fletcher's, we all have the opportunity to create our own unique personality that ex that uh, attracts a very specific kind of person. Okay. And are you guys kind of turning out some athletes with, with your membership? Because I'm seeing... Oh. It, like you, you do that as well, I guess. Cause that's what I see as well. It's like these, these places have this, this awesome tendency to take in members, right. And then turn them mm -hmm. into, you know, bodybuilders, power lifters, or like competing athletes to some degree. So are you guys doing the same to some, to I some think level? So. Okay. I think so. And like last year we, uh, we hosted our first strongman competition at the height of COVID. It was a uh, first annual Rudrew classic. Yeah. And we're hosting our second one this October. Awesome. And my goal with this show is to uh, basically make the, because I know we're just such a green spa state when it comes to strongman, the weights are lighter than you'll see in like Texas or Alabama, where there's already a very strong culture for strongman. So it's a good entry level for that. And down the road, I really want to uh, start doing two shows a year. Mm. where we have that and then we also do like a louisiana strongest man where it's a heavier show but right now we're just at the grassroots level trying to get as many people interested in the sport of strongman as possible so this is kind of the way that we that you go about implementing that kind of sport into like louisiana mm. culture specifically i think <laughs> you know like what you yeah. said it's 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 it, introducing it as something that's more fun and more inviting and entertaining maybe you know as opposed to like oh you got to be the strongest son of a bitch in here you know yeah definitely yeah no that's awesome man I, I love that but it's it's and it's more it's not like you know we said it's more appealing but i think the workout style as well is mm -hmm. it, it hits on that whole uniqueness type of thing you know everybody's looking to make their workouts different they're trying to add some a new dimension to change their bodies and this this is the way to go so do you see like, do you think that this is sort of the missing ingredient that people need maybe to make some more progress? I think we definitely appeal to a more blue collar uh, okay. athlete. Um, you know, like just the other day, we had somebody who works at a granite shop just down the road. Yeah. 
he found us because like hell he lives granted all damn day he thinks he'd be pretty good at lifting stones because that's what he does for a living <laughs> probably and, is great at lifting stones yeah yes uh yeah. so we attract we attract those kind of people we attract a lot of the uh the plant workers a lot of law sure. enforcement um yeah you know people who want to Hard get into a sport to be stronger not necessarily look prettier if that makes sense and then when when you're training to be strong anyway, I mean you're gonna look great. That's your your work and strength is gonna is gonna turn your body into something something awesome, a great physique, you know. And and I'm sure you saw it with like CrossFit, right? Like as you did CrossFit, did you feel as though your body was changing without you really focusing on the look of it? Well, yes and no, because I came from lifting much heavier when I was in Afghanistan. And the box that I joined was, uh, that wasn't really its focus. So I saw all of my, I saw my strength drop significantly. My endurance definitely shot up, sure. uh, but that wasn't really what I was interested in, which is why I ultimately left CrossFit and started focusing on different, uh, different methods of training just because me, I'm, I'm naturally aerobic. Sure. Like I could go and run a half marathon tomorrow. It would suck for the next week and it would suck while I was doing it. Mm -hmm. but my genetics lend to being naturally good at that. Yeah. Strength is something I am not naturally good at. Something I have to actually scratch and claw for every single pound that I add to a barbell. Okay. So I constantly have that challenge. That's one of the things that draws me to it. See, that's interesting. Cause I, you know, I, it makes sense though. Cause with all your military training and everything, I'm sure aerobic, I mean, aerobics is part of that. It's, it's, it's all about yeah. it, you know? So you're, you're accustomed to it regardless. So, but no, I mean, you're, it's I would feel like you're naturally built for powerlifting as well because I mean you're a big dude like you know I'm skinny like I I'm like the one plate guy I ask people to spot okay. me when I'm like 135 so so I'm like I'm you know my plates are banging when I'm like doing my bench press and shit so okay. I'm I'm the small guy <laughs> no but well, I uh, mean it, it, it's all relative like most yeah. of my friends are over 300 pounds okay so like I'm I'm sitting here about 2:30 right now and I'm the small guy in this gym. Hmm. And strongman is a weight class sport. Like how much do you weigh? Do you know what I mean? Uh, like 180. Yeah, I'm like flat 180. Yeah. So yeah, the uh the lightweight men's in United States Strongman, which is the federation that we use over here for the Rigaroo. Yeah. Uh, the lightweight men go from you know zero pounds to 188, and then from wow. 188 to 220 is the middleweights. So it's a weight class sport, just like anything else. And, you know, you can get strong. I've seen a dude your size pull 500. Huh. Wow. Oh, my God. Well, see, it's, it, this is all new to me, too. Like, as I'm listening to you, I didn't even know, uh, you know, the strongman category even existed mm -hmm. that, that much in Louisiana. That's yep, so it's, cool. it's a weight class sport, very similar to powerlifting. Now, granted, we're still at the point where some of those weight classes we wind up having combined because it, like I said, is a very green sport here. Yeah. But they do exist. But like this year, I'm expecting to probably have to combine our lightweights and our middleweights. And okay. I'm probably going to have to combine a couple of the women's classes. Sure. But already, like last year, we had most of our women that competed were competing in novice, which novice is a it's a um, it's a weight class just made just for new people. Okay. Because unlike powerlifting, you don't choose your weights in strongman. The weights are already there, and you either pick up the thing or you don't pick up the thing. That's cool. Uh, I like that. So there are novice divisions. Like there's men's lightweight novice, which is 220 and under, and then there's okay. men's heavyweight novice, which is 220 and above. And then there's just women, just novice. But last year, all of our women, except for one, competed in women's novice. And this year we have we're still five months out from the show and we have four women's novice signed up. And then we have one lightweight, one middleweight, one heavyweight, and one super heavyweight, all all signed up for open already. So it's already awesome. just in this last year, we've skyrocketed in terms of growth. Holy cow, man. Damn. That's so cool. It, it, and you guys, how'd you do during COVID? Like you said, you held, you had like a, a meet and everything was everything. Okay. Besides that. So our dates for, I remember in January, we, we planned out our first competition. The plan was it was going to be late May, you know, because we were locked down for two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what it was. It was two weeks at the time. So we figured, all right, we're, 
we've got plenty of time to, to plan this. It'll all be okay. Yeah. As we got closer to May, we realized that that wasn't going to be the case. Uh, Twin Peaks here in Baton Rouge, they were supposed to be our venue. We were going, it was going to be a parking lot show, very similar to the car shows that they do. That's dope. That's and, cool. Uh, I've never heard of that. And then, well, so that was the plan. Yeah. Then May started getting closer. We realized that everything was still shut down. Everything was getting worse. There were more and more restrictions yeah. going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of people didn't have access to gyms. So we decided, okay, we're going to, we looked at 12 weeks from that day and we pushed it again just to give people more time to train. That day came along and it still was all shut down. So we moved it one more time. Uh, I don't remember. It was, I want to say it was late October. It, it was late October because I was kind of worried that with uh, Hurricane Laura, because last year was very busy for the National Guard. Uh, sure. I was worried with Hurricane Laura that I wasn't even going to be able to be present at this show. They put us in phase three, mm -hmm. uh, two weeks out from the show, from the date of the show. Okay. I called Twin Peaks and I was like, okay, we're in phase three, so we're good to go now, right? And then their GM said, well, we looked at our calendar and the date that we wound up picking was the kickoff for LSU's first game. And there was a boxing match and a USC match that day. So oh. they were worried that us coming in with a crowd, we get the fire marshals call in the place we get shut down for the day. Oh, damn. Which I can't fault them. You know, it yeah, makes sense I, from a business standpoint. Sure. I wish that we had all looked at the calendar ahead of time and picked a better day. But uh, at the time, we were in our 2,000 square foot space that we had. Yeah. And we were talking with the landlord. We had, we had all but finalized everything to move in the location that we are now. Mm -hmm. I gave mm -hmm. him a call. And I explained to him the situation and asked him if we could just use the building for one weekend a month before we moved in. And he was cool about it. He let us go in. We signed the paperwork. Uh, I just got insurance put on the place a month prior. And if you go back and you and you look around that time period in our Instagram, you'll see like there's a tractor in the background. There's a bunch of construction stuff just, <laughs> just piled wow. up. But we, we made it work. Uh, we had planned. We had 63 athletes sign up because of the rescheduling and COVID. We wound up having 45 actually show up the day of. And they all brought and they wound up Still bringing great. in crowds. Yeah, sponsors were happy. Athletes were happy. Uh, yeah, we've, we've already, we're five months out and more than, I, I think about 30 right now have signed up for the competition this year. And we're still more than five, uh, we're still five months out from the show. Damn. I love that, man. It's, it's serious. Like that's, that's, that's legit. I'm so happy you guys pulled that off and you're, you're on to the next one now. Oh, that's great. We're, we're trying to do something over here. Yeah, no, it's 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 freaking working. And you guys also have a podcast too. I noticed your uh, the sign behind your head, the Nerds and Iron podcast. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to uh, how to switch the image. On the <laughs> no, fly no, no, it's uh, okay. No, I, no, I love it, dude. No, I I'm glad you have it in the background because I want I want people to see it. But like, no, it's it's cool. I I I was like I I looked when I was looking on the Instagram and everything, I saw the podcast and my, the first thing that came to my mind was like, that is brilliant. Like there needs to be some different stuff going on in fitness when it comes to like entertainment or comedy, mm -hmm. you know, some other shit, you know? And like, that's, that's dope. I love that, man. I do just, well, I don't go. know what it is, but we just kind of noticed there seems to be an overlap between uh, people who were picked on in high school for being into nerdy shit and people that got into strength sports. Yeah. So, like, we found out, we realized that our group chat, all we're talking about is the latest episode of Clone Wars or what's going on in Falcon and Winter Soldier or yeah. what's going on in World's Strongest Man. So we just decided to start a podcast based around that. So, like, um, what time is it right now? Right now, uh, I don't know what time this airs, but it's 227 at yeah. 6 p.m. Yeah. tonight. My uh, co-host actually shows up and we're doing World's Strongest Man predictions uh, because they released the brackets. Uh, oh, for wow, the different okay. heats. So I don't know how much you know about World Strongest Man, but the way it works is they have five. They have the the uh, qualifiers, and then they have the finals. In the qualifiers, there's five groups of five athletes, and only two move on to the finals. And then there's like a stone off usually between the people who don't get there, so that somebody else can wind up in there. But with a lot of these groups, and they're very very stacked. 
So mm -hmm. it's anyone's guess as to who's actually going to make it to the finals. So that's what that's going. Uh, English is hard. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. Yeah, I I know about you know the competitors. I know about mm -hmm. the big names and everything, but I've never I've never known about the breakdown, like how yeah. how you go from one step to the next and everything. Mm -hmm. Are the set are, are like the you have the half Thor? Is he in it? Like, half Thor is not in it. Half Thor is actually retired from from. I didn't know. Uh, okay, wow. Yep. After he hmm. pulled his 501 kilogram last year, he retired, walked up to the camera, and challenged Eddie Hall to a boxing match. Okay, that's right. That's happening. That I that, yep. that I remember that because I keep yep. seeing stuff popping up on Facebook like Eddie Hall's new mm -hmm. transformation. Same thing with Thor. You know. Yep. So they're you getting know. ready to duke out in September, and it's going to be a shit show. It's going to look like. Uh, two gorillas having a slap box match no but i get a I get a kick too out of the hype they generate i think mm -hmm. it's all marketing you know more oh, than 100%. i would yeah like it's because it, you see you see these things and everybody's commenting like don't yeah. you remember when eddie hall talked shit to half thor mm -hmm. at the other it's like it's like whoa <laughs> you know like it, it's really no different than the mayweather paul fight that's happening tomorrow yeah, it's it's gonna be a shit show, but people are gonna get paid, and that's true. That's all, and that's all there is to it. It's uh, it's disheartening for people at my level in the sport, though, because like if the guys at the top aren't really taking their sport seriously, then what? How should we expect anyone else? Okay, that's you true. Know, but at the same time, you win if you if you win the Arnold, you get seventy five thousand dollars. That pales in comparison is what they're going to make on this fight. So I can't, I can't fall. True. It's just it's a growing sport. The money's not there yet. Hopefully, the money will be there in the future. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. the way it is. No, and they've uh, and they've definitely turned into celebrities at this point. So they could just sit oh, there 100%. and they could sit there. Oh, I'm gonna challenge Brian mm -hmm. Shaw to a tennis match now. I'm, you know, I don't see and Brian Shaw doing that. Uh, <laughs> but you know, if people would watch it. They'd be like, oh man, oh my god, no way, tennis. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so or ping pong. I don't know. Feel like they can yeah. they're at that level where they could just sit there and, and create you know some match and it'll mm -hmm. it'll it'll be a big thing it'll be on pay-per-view or whatever but i'll ask you this though who do you predict is going to win the boxing match or is that or do you want to save that for your podcast it well we've we've talked about on the podcast already it's okay. really hard to say because eddie hall's not really putting anything out in regards to his training so we don't really know what he's doing behind the scenes i can okay. tell you that uh between Half Thor has done two exhibition matches so far, and there was a huge improvement between his first exhibition match and his second. That being said, he's still getting worked over by a guy that's 6'2 and, and 100 pounds lighter than he is. But they're professional boxers. That's true. Uh, that's I, true. Think, I think the fact that all of Eddie's training is either bag stuffs or sparring matches and the fact that Half Thor is actually doing exhibition matches with a crowd I think that is when plans uh, play into what happens in September when they actually go at it for real. That being said, I think in a street fight, Eddie Hall would whoop half Thor's ass. <laughs> there just you go. Well, it's just based on the fact that neither of them have been big their whole life. Like, well, true. they've they've been big bigger guys, but they haven't been four hundred pound gorillas their whole life. It's true. Eddie Hall got his start in swimming, so That's he was right. a sick swimmer and. You know, I'm sure we've all been drunk in a bar and thought, you know, they could still probably take that dude who's 6'2". You know, like Eddie Hall's been stepped up to in a bar before, stepped up to in school before. Half Thor has always been 6'8". I don't think yeah. he's ever been in a fight. That's true. Like, That's true. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah, so there's kind of the question of experience. You know, there's the yeah. question of how, how long have you dealt with fighting and, you know, have you mm -hmm. dealt with some level of, of, competition in that regard and yeah i get what you're saying so it's kind of to, Ed, to eddie hall's credit there yeah well that's interesting i yeah i i've never i've never thought about it but you're right it's like that's that's happening right now and 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 your sport it, it's it's weird it's like at that high level they're kind of they they like they moved on they're doing other stuff now and pretty much yeah and like and with like with the popularity of po powerlifting and the strongman and everything, it's not super monetized, right? Like at the Arnold, that's kind of the highest level as far as like monetization goes, and what you can win out of that sport, right? It, it really am, I, am I wrong? Because I don't really know. 
the the real way you make money in strongman it strongman provides the opportunity for you to be seen and what you do with that opportunity is on you so like brian shaw he created several companies he does a lot of training he does apparel yeah. uh half door has been in several movies he has this boxing match uh eddie hall's a little different because in england strongman is way more popular than it is here in america yeah. like in england england strongest man it can sell out an arena you can't oh, do that wow. here with america's strongest man no oh, like God, the no. strongest men in america aren't even competing in america's strongest man because the sport just isn't big enough here <laughs> they wait to be in the arnold or world's strongest man sure uh, but that is something that i think we're working to change at the grassroots level uh, there's a lot of promoters all around the country that are doing the same kind of things that I'm doing, trying to spread the sport. And I think 10 years from now, we, we can sell out those stadiums, but it's going to take constant work, a lot of dedication and a lot of sleepless nights to do that. Damn right, man. No, that's so true.